believe you come back, baby, you get my go manage. From here to here, rock in a musical savage. Therefore, now come down the lyrical cottage. Prepare for the return of the musical carriage. Who that from the carriage have a positive message? This flavor, what that boy, you live, it's up and solid. See, you don't want to stop burning. Now, like, um, on the local scene, you're in Virginia Beach, and you guys seem to have a pretty good reggae scene here, uh, you yeah. know. Um, tell me a little bit more about the local reggae scene. Yeah, uh, you, you have some artists here. Uh, you have Rest Attitude, some major artists here. You have, um, you have George from that from that band, um, Nature's Child. You have, you have Nubian, Empress Michelle. You have a whole lot of artists here that's really putting in work, and they're trying to um, to get to that next level. Once again, they're meeting those obstacles, you know, and uh, sometimes it, it, it get unbearable and then throw them hands up in the air and say too hard. But you know, whatever you put in is what you're going to get. So if you only put in six months and think you gave it your all, that's pretty much what you got back, you know. You have to stick it out. And, but those guys, those guys here, they have a good thing going. Unfortunately, I'm not always here. I'm not always that's a good. That is a good thing, though. Yeah, you know what? It means you're prosperous and you're doing yeah, well. When I when I pass through a club here in Virginia, it's like, it's like they say when the DJ says, "Oh, sleepy's in the club." It's people looking around like, and it surprised me sometimes. Oh, they're looking at me like that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, something you have to preserve preserve your prestige. You have to preserve your prestige because sometimes your image is, is like, I think it's eighty five percent of this business. You know what I'm saying? Just how you carry yourself. And you can't make yourself be too common. If 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 every Friday I could see this artist in this club just sitting down drinking or jumping on the mic every Friday, then he has a big show coming up right here in Virginia. Why would I go see him? Why would I go spend twenty dollars to see him? I just seen him for five dollars at the other club last right. night, doing everything that he that he possibly has in his catalog. So you know you preserve that. You 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 deal with your talent like a business. And you deal with your appearances as a business, and I think you would you would create a longevity situation. And do you? How do you feel? I mean, because you, your career has spanned a, a very long time, and you're probably at the you're right at, right at the peak of it. Yeah. You're usually an artist who's been around for the for the duration you have, especially yeah. in dance hall. Yeah. But at this point, they're kind of seen as old head. They kind of the has been. Mm -hmm. But you're at the peak right now. Oh yeah, I'm doing it right now. And I, it's a lot of even the dance hall people right now still wondering where sleep is at because once again because they're not hearing you on the clear channel stations and they might not see you on BT. But if them if they check on other stations and you know, I'm in heavy rotation, and if you probably turn to VH1 or MTV2, I'm in rotation there. I'm in different markets, tearing up the place. You know what I'm saying? Moving a lot of numbers. Radio retaliation went gold in Greece. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And. It's my gold record here on the wall. A lot of units, so I'm still doing it. You know what I'm saying? Just being humble, enjoying it while I do it, because it's still fun to me. I mean, when you were younger, when you were younger, did you did you ever think of doing anything else with your life, or did you just know music I, I, or bust? You know, the funny thing is, I started out doing music since I was young, like 12, 13. But I had one of those old school moms that you got to give me the diploma first before you even talk about you want to do anything out of the way. Right. So, I have I have a degree in business education. Well, I can there you type a hundred words a minute. I could balance an account book, and I could do shorthand. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a business. I got business degrees. So, I did that, satisfied the old lady, and then pursued <laughs> what I had to do. But I've been you. I wanted to do music. That what does was your mother think of you now? She passed on, I'm sorry. but she was very proud of me. She I'm was, she was very proud. She was, she, she, she passed on like four years ago. But she, you know, she was around to see the, the change. And when I got signed to, the thievery and okay. the crowds of eighty thousand people and stuff like that, the travels, and she was very proud. And I never, like, I never, I never had a real job. I mean, this is my job. I never had a nine to five. I never sold drugs or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? I was always committed to this music thing. You know, it's just different parts of it right now. I'm more in tune to the business part of it. So I guess she was right when she said go do a business course because no, I can't take care and run my own record company. I make sure the books and the taxes be on time, you know what I mean? <laughs> Very important. <laughs> yeah. Very important. And I guess that would be your first advice to anybody thinking of starting independent. Oh yeah, yeah. Make sure the books keep your and finances keep straight. Keep your finances straight. <laughs> tell you, you know. So yeah. It's a good thing. 
So, so as far as terms of, of um, traditional reggae, uh, you know, who, who are some of the quality artists you listen to now? I know, like, I'm a big fan of Taurus Riley and mm -hmm. Morgan Heritage, and mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of Morgan Heritage. They're right behind yeah. that. One me, I'm a wall. Probably the greatest. Uh, excuse me uh -huh. for interrupting, but probably the greatest reggae band in the world right now, I in my opinion. So. I think so. I listen to um, the Amel Mali. Uh, we've been doing spot dates on the tour. Every so often, we we're on the same bill from Europe back to the states, and um. He is a very talented dude. He's not really leaning on this Mali thing. I mean, people see him as a Mali, but dude is straight fire. He's the real deal. You know what I'm saying? Him and Steven. Steven is the producer. Steven is the one that creates all those big songs in the studio. So I give him credit also as right. a producer. What did you think of the combination with Nas? Oh, that was a good move. That was a good move. See, Nas is one of the best artists that ever did it out there from New York. And, you know, when they did that distant relative, that distant relative project. I mean, both of them on, on each hand is generating so much fun. They have such a fan base. So them combine it now and everybody that didn't know about them and then know about them and then everybody that didn't know about Nas know about Nas. And now the world is ready for that distant relative part two. Right. Part three, I should say. You know what I'm saying? They're ready yeah. for it. It's a beautiful thing. And I think that's all Steven's idea. Even that remix album that they did that remix Bob Marley album back in the days with Turn Out the Lights and right, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. That was Steven's idea, you know, that dude is a serious dude. Because uh, um, we were talking earlier about the reggae and hip hop, the correlation and how they're both kind of in the mainstream, they're going downhill. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're pretty much pushing the ignorance right now in both genres. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think that Nas and Damien coming together brings two total quality yes. acts together yes. and, and proves that you still can, you know, do something new and unique. Even the um, even the Kanye West album, the last one, I think he called it "Dark and Dark and Crazy Fantasy" or something. Like that. Kanye is still holding up that real hip hop thing. Nothing. I call it bubblegum rap. Nothing but a, but bubblegum rap. None of that vocal that stuff on his voice this time around. is straight hip hop. And so it's I don't know how many units he sold on this last one because he didn't do the the, the vocal that thing and. I hold that bubblegum rapping, but it, it was a great project to me. But I mean, you look at even his label now. Who's he? He has Common on the label. He's got mm -hmm. Most Def on his label. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, major labels wouldn't even think about signing I those know, guys. I know those cats right now because they think that all that seriousness is done ever since Public Enemy. Right.